The Asian Theater Arts We'll be going through the famous theater arts of China, Japan, and Indonesia. First, we'll be starting out with China. The Chinese-speaking opera is a form of traditional Chinese theater that originated in Peking, now Beijing, in the late 18th century. Compared to other types of Chinese theater, it is a relatively new style of drama combining music, song, dance, and acrobatics in a lively and colorful display. The start of the Peking Opera was set at 1790 at the year of the 18th birthday of the Shenlong Emperor. Up until that point in the early Qing Dynasty, the educated nobility favored Kunshu Opera, which was known for its elegant music and fine language. On the other hand, various styles of regional popular theater enjoyed by commoners were dismissed by the Chinese elite. That changed in 1790 when four seasoned drama troupes from Anhui province entered the capital to perform for the imperial court in celebration of Shenlong's birthday. The occasion marked the first time regional popular theater was performed in Peking, now known as Beijing. The four troupes later came to be known as the four great Anhui companies and together dominated Peking opera for the next century. In the early years of Peking opera, all actors were men with the roles of women played by young boys. After the founding of the People's Republic of China in 1949, Peking opera performances that dealt with contemporary and revolutionary themes were encouraged, while other topics were censored. During the Cultural Revolution of the 1960s, all forms of traditional theater were banned, and artists found themselves humiliated and persecuted by the Red Courts. Despite these tumultuous events, Peking opera was revived in the 1980s, and the lively art form continues to be performed up until today. The Japanese Kabuki Theater Kabuki is stylish Japanese theater known for its elaborate drama, makeup, and costumes. The performances feature exciting stories rich in drama, feats of superhuman strength, and spectacular stage effects. It's entertaining and bizarre in equal proportions and amusing even to those who can speak a word of Japanese. Now here's a brief history of this fascinating genre. The founder of kabuki dance drama is most commonly thought to be Uzomu no Okini, a shrine maiden, who used the dry riverbeds of Kyoto as her stage. The performances were a hit with regular folk, and when Ukuni was asked to perform for the imperial court, a new style of theater was born. Kabuki faced two especially difficult times since its inception, and the first was in the mid-1800s. Kabuki experienced a decline in popularity and attendance in part due to the frequent drought fires destroying the theaters. When the shogunate fell and the Meiji Restoration period began, Kabuki returned to Edo proper and once, once again in the spotlight. Kabuki's second challenging time came right after the Second World War. The post-war era was a time of change and many people began rejecting the ways of the past. To exacerbate things, Kabuki was bound once again, this time by occupying forces. But this brief ban was lifted in 1947, just a few years later. Innovative director Tetsuji Takechi and actor Nakamura Shinjaku helped spark renewed interest in Kabuki, and it flourished once again. Today, Kabuki is still performed at large theaters in Tokyo and beyond, like the Kab Kab Kabukiza and sometimes by troupes traveling the world. Kabuki is a centuries-old art form and one of UNESCO's intangible cultural heritage. The Indonesian Wayang Kuli the, Indi the Indonesian Wayang Kuli is a traditional form of puppet shadow play originally found in the cultures of Java and Bali in Indonesia. Hinduism arrived in Indonesia from India before the Islamic and Christian era. Sanskrit became the literary and court language of Java and later of Bali. Wayang Kulit was later assimilated into local culture from India with changes to the appearance of the characters that resemble cultural norms. When Islam began spreading in Indonesia, this, the display of god or gods in human form was prohibited, and thus this style of shadow play was suppressed. King Raden Pata of Demak Java wanted to see the Wayang in its traditional form but failed to obtain permission from Muslim re religious, re religious leaders. Religious leader, leaders attempted to skirt the Muslim prohibition by converting the Wayang Golik into Wayang Purpa, made from leather and displayed only the shadow instead of the puppets themselves. <laughs>